I'm so broken. Hello ladies and gents, welcome back to review time. I apologise for my current state, but you see, Kingdom of Ash broke me and my brain has not fully recovered yet, so forming any sort of logical thought or cohesive sentences is a little bit of a struggle right now. Today's review is going to be structured a little bit differently to my previous reviews. I normally focus on plot, world building characters and writing when I'm reviewing a book, but because this is the last book of this series, I feel that if I dive into the world building and the writing of it, I'm just going to end up repeating myself. So I'm I'm just going to be focusing on key parts of the story that really, really stood out for me. So there's not really going to be a particular structure to this review. It's just going to be me explaining how this 980 page book shattered my ice cold heart and drew tears from my eyes. Tears which did not stop flowing for a good half an hour. So without further ado, let's dive in. Firstly, I do just want to say that I I have really enjoyed the journey and the experience that I've gone on since starting this whole series. I didn't like the first couple of books, but the later books in the series were really, really good. I thoroughly enjoyed Tower of Dawn. It was the first book I gave a five out of five star to from the Throne of Glass series. And I've also given Kingdom of Ash five stars as well, because it just took me on such an emotional roller coaster. I do highly recommend this series if you are a massive lover of fantasy and you want a action-packed series which completely changes from start to finish because essentially the Throne of Glass series started as a story about an assassin and then turned into multiple queens fighting for their birthrights and their people and their lands. So the series went through a lot of changes as it progressed. It doesn't end anything like the way it started but that is one one of the main things that I have actually really really enjoyed about this series. So I will be doing a video very soon where I'm taking the entire series, breaking it down and coming up with strategies and ways that I would actually make a screen adaptation for it because Kingdom of Ash just not only broke me but it reminded me why I love reading so much and my inner filmmaker did a backflip and started squealing at me to find a way to bring the Throne of Glass novel series to life on the screen so I will have a video about that up shortly. So for today I'm not really gonna go through the plot as a whole because there's just too much going on for me to be able to structure that properly so I'm just gonna go through the key moments that really really got me and some of the hardcore emotional scenes and hopefully, hopefully it'll make sense by the time I'm finished. So first thing I want to talk about is Aelin's torture. Now I kind of knew when I finished Empire of Storms that Maeve was not going to put Aelin in a five-star hotel. I knew that Maeve was going to attempt to destroy Aelin because I feel that Maeve is actually terrified of Aelin and that's why she's trying to break her so much. But she brings in this pointy-eared prick to essentially rip her body apart and we do find out once Rowan and Gavriel Lorcan and Eldie have rescued Aelin that he destroyed her body and tortured her so much that her skin is brand new. I remember saying in my review for the first book that I loved the fact that Aelin was covered in scars because it meant that she at least had some flaws because I don't believe there is such a thing as a perfect protagonist. They have to have some flaws otherwise your audience just can't connect with them because that's just really unrelatable. So I really enjoyed Aelin having scars and then then the pointy-eared torturer takes them all away. They wreck her body so much that the healers can't even repair it. They have to essentially give her brand new skin because there's nothing left of her old skin. That's how bad her torture is. And I will admit that at some points it was really difficult to read those torture scenes and I did find some of them just really upsetting and 
I had to put the book down for a moment and just take a breather because I was actually getting really, really upset and then like my sadness kind of turned into anger and I had this little vision of myself jumping into the book and grabbing a frying pan and just beating Maeve over the head with it really for being so horrible. Next, I want to talk about my main girl, Manon Blackbeak, because Manon is now a queen. I always knew she was going to be a queen because she just deserves a crown on her head. I love her that much. So we start Manon's story when she's with her 13 and Dorian flying around trying to find the rest of the Crochan witches. Again, I really hope I'm pronouncing that right because some of the names in Sarah J Mass novels just kind of throw me out a little bit, but I believe it's pronounced um, Crochan, the other witches who wear the red capes. They eventually find a coven and naturally the coven is not very welcoming to Manon and her 13 because they've spent their entire lives hunting these poor witches. So Manon, in her brutality and her cleverness, arranges for an iron teeth coven to attack a Crochan coven so Manon and her 13 can essentially protect the Crochans from the Iron Teeth and save the day and hopefully that's going to build some trusting relationships between her and her people. Naturally it pays off, kind of, slightly. Dorian knows that she organised it but no one else does. And then the 13 and Manon stay with these Crochan witches and decide to journey with them to Ilwi and they come across this battlefield and there's just bodies everywhere of Crochan witches and humans. Manon sees this bloodshed on the battlefield and decides then and there that she's really, really going to embrace who she is now and she gets on her hands and knees and starts clawing away at the dirt and then the rest of the 13 start doing the same and then Crochan witches try and join in but Manon holds her hand up and says, only the 13. And they spend the entire day using their hands to hand dig a mass grave for all the fallen witches and they bury them themselves and it takes them a whole day and a whole night but they still do it and that's when the Crochans really start to appreciate Manon and start trusting her and that moment when she just falls to her knees and starts digging this grave with her hands just solidified my love of this character because she in my opinion has gone through the most change in this series she is nothing like she was when we first met her in Air of Fire in Air of Fire she was a bit of an obedient lapdog to her grandmother and I personally cannot stand Manon's grandmother. She's not even a villain I love to hate, I just hate her. But now she's really taking the lead and coming into her crown and realizing that life is not just about obedience and discipline and brutality. It can be about compassion and love and devotion to your people. And that was just something that really, really got me. So that was one of my top, top moments in this book. I also really enjoyed reading Aelin's escape slash rescue because I wouldn't really call it a flat out rescue because it's kind of a team effort between Aelin and Fenris and then Lork and Gavriel and Eldie. There was just something about the way those chapters were written which I just absolutely loved. Their pacing was brilliant, the descriptions were fantastic and it really did have me on the edge of my seat. I didn't know if this rescue mission was actually going to pay off. I was so convinced that Maeve was going to come back at the last minute but thank god she didn't and it actually paid off. The aftermath of Aelin's escape slash rescue and it's when she just drops to her knees, starts clawing at the mask on her face and just screams to take it off. And it's the only thing she can say because she can't think of anything else but just getting this mask off her face. That was some heart-wrenching stuff. And then the little folk make an appearance and that had me going whoop whoop when I was reading it because I was wondering when the little folk were gonna actually do something in this series. One of my absolute favorite moments from this book has to be Manon versus the three matrons of the Iron Teeth Witches. It was just epic and I have been waiting for a showdown between Manon and her grandmother since Manon left the Iron Teeth Witches back in Empire of Storms and you know Kingdom of Ash just gave me what I wanted really and I was so happy with it. The fight is quick and brutal especially when Manon just decapitates the Yellow Legs matron and just holds her head up like now what you gonna do? And then 
she takes the crown off and tries to give it back to the crochet witches but then they're just like nah it's your crown you have to keep it you are queen now oh heartfelt moment so the story progresses um quite quickly to be honest there's lots of individual battles going on and we get aiden and lysandra's point of view good old lysandra still love her to bits highly rate her another completely epic moment in this book was dorian just wrecking an entire building in Mora. Since the start of this book series, I didn't like Dorian. I thought he was a bit of a wimp and a bit of a throwaway character, to be honest. But towards the later novels like Empire of Storms and Kingdom of Ash, he really, really grew on me. And this one moment where he manages to evade a Valg king and completely trick a Valg queen whilst destroying half of their castle in Morath was just brilliant, really. And I felt that a moment like that is exactly what Dorian needed because that just solidified his character development for me and it finally showed me what Dorian is capable of. There was one aspect about Kingdom of Ash which was actually really disappointing though. As much as I absolutely love it and I've rated it five stars and I will highly recommend it, this one little bit of the plot really disappointed me and that was Aelin's Wall of Fire. Now I know what you must be thinking, Aelin's Wall of Fire? It was such an epic moment and yes don't get me wrong it was an incredible epic moment and a true display of power and magic but to me it felt wasted for the entire series the Val King Erewhon has been built up to be this seemingly unbeatable opponent because he's got all this power and he's got all these resources and there's been hints dropped throughout all the different books that there is going to be this one epic final battle between Aelin and and Erewhon and Maeve and you know just throw Irene in there for good measure. So I was very much looking forward to that fight, that final climactic battle between Aelin and Erewhon because you know he's been destroying her life since she was a child and I felt that she needed to get revenge on him and Maeve obviously for ripping her body apart. So we know that during her three months of torture she's been tunneling into her magic reserve. She's been building it and building it and building it for three months and it's becoming very difficult to keep all that magic contained because you know you have to release it so she has been slowly releasing it but we know that this girl has now got a serious serious well of power built up in her which would just be perfect for a final fight and then she uses that three months of magic to save the armies and stop this flood that is going to wipe them all out by using her fire magic to build this giant wall of fire and Woo, Elaine saves the day and it's all well and good. And then the army then goes to Terrison to save the rest of the days. Yes, it was a really epic moment. Yes, I can really appreciate it for what it was. But to me, it did just feel like a bit of a waste. And that's only because I was expecting to have this final epic magic versus magic showdown between Aelin and Erewhon. That was just one of the points of the story that did kind of get to me a little bit and I felt could have been done differently. And then we get to the whole forging of the lock part. Now we know that either Aelin or Dorian has to sacrifice themselves to forge this lock but once it is forged they can send the Valg demons and the gods of this world back to their world where the gods have promised to kill Erewhon and that's it. Everyone's problems are over. And I was like okay yeah no that's that's fair enough. For a great gain you have to obviously sacrifice something as great. And I was honestly expecting Dorian to sacrifice himself to forge this lock but then if he had done that, Kingdom of Ash would be half the length that it is, wouldn't it? The whole lock forging thing was one of the only points in this book that I really, 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 really did not like because the whole forging of the lock, waste all your power, essentially was for nothing. So Aelin is forging the lock with Dorian and then Dorian's dad comes back and that was a bit of a shock, was not expecting that. Aelin then kicks Dorian out so her and his dad can then finish forging this lock. It's sapping all of Aelin's magic, it's, it's taking her magic away from her and eventually once her magic runs out I think it would have taken her life force as well. I don't know, the descriptions of that whole section were a little bit confusing. So the lock has sapped most of her power at this point and it forges and the, all these portals start opening and you can see different worlds beyond them. The gods appear and Aelin tries to make a deal with them. She says you don't have to take Erewhon back to your world but please spare Elena. So she essentially wants to do like this whole swap thing. Like, 
like, leave Erewhon and Elena and I will deal with Erewhon later. One of the gods, or goddesses, should I say, just goes over and completely destroys Elena, just like that, and just turns to Aelin and goes, we don't make deals with mortals. And I'm like, well, you've done it before, you could have done it again. And then they still don't take Erewhon back to their world with them. They just kind of walk in like, mm, look at us, we're gods, we don't care about anything. Aelin kind of gets her revenge on them though. She opens a portal in their world, which lets loads of weird ass creatures in and eventually starts destroying them. And I'm assuming that's what gave her the nickname God Killer. But she has no magic. Well, she's got some magic. One of the goddesses, the goddess of light, gives Aelin a little bit of her power, which helps Aelin kind of get back to her world, because this all takes place in this sort of like weird dimensional rift, I'd say. Aelin eventually gets back and she has like no magic now. And to me, it kind of felt like it was all for nothing. She had this amazing, incredible, earth shattering power that she could have used to defend and protect her people for the rest of her life. Yet she gives it all away to forge this lock and gets absolutely zilch in return. Now it's time to talk about the final battle. The final big fight outside the walls of the capital city of Terrison. So my girl Manon arrives with an army of witches because she is queen now to defend the walls of this city. And that was a really epic moment. The battle starts, the aerial combat kicks off. We've got witches riding broomsticks. We've got witches riding wyverns, ripping each other to part in the skies, truly trying to defend their way of life. And then we've got the ground combat where the city is under siege, but they're defending the walls. And then Lysandra's in the lake in her sea dragon form, you know, just bursting up and ripping the army to shreds as much as she could. Honestly, Lysandra single-handedly probably destroyed about half this army, so we need to seriously big up Lysandra here. And then extra yellow legs arrives on the scene. This witch is not even a witch you love to hate. You just hate her. She smashes her wyvern into Abraxos, and then Abraxos gets really badly injured, and at this point, I'm already on the verge of tears. Thank God the Blue Bloods heir comes along and manages to essentially save Manon and Abraxas from the Yellowlegs heir. Manon manages to land Abraxas back onto the city battlements. The 13 fly straight for her. They land together. Everyone jumps off their wyverns, runs to Abraxas. Everyone's using their hands to stop the bleeding to keep him alive because the 13 are just so close and they love each other so much and it was such a beautiful moment. And then the witch tower arrives. This is the part which broke me to be honest because I love the 13. They honestly were the only reason why I kept reading this series. So Astrin punches Manon in the gut causing her to double over which prevents her from stopping the 13 from sacrificing themselves. The way that their sacrifice was written, the way it was described, was beautiful. They jumped on their wyverns, they flew in formation, they smashed through the Iron Teeth ranks, got as close to the Witch Tower as possible. Astrin was the only one that actually made it onto the tower and she rips her shirt open so you can see the brand unclean written on her stomach as she faces Manon's grandmother and I know I said that I wanted this big showdown between Manon and her grandmother where Manon you know kills her grandmother but Astrin taking out Manon's grandmother was the way to do it that was Astrin deserved it more than Manon to be honest and then the 13 give themselves over to the yielding which is where witches can access insane amounts amounts of magical power but at the cost of their own lives and anyone within close proximity to them and normally when witches give themselves over to the yielding the light that comes off them is black it's like black magic but when these girls sacrifice themselves to save Manon and everyone within the city walls it's not black magic and it's not black light that's coming off them it's white light it's pure white magic and that was really really beautifully written. It was such a heartbreaking moment but it was written in a way that you loved these characters even more for their sacrifice and I'm still not over it. The next chapter comes along and it broke me again. This is why. Glenys stayed until the end and when they were alone on the silent battlefield Manon's great-grandmother put a hand on her shoulder and said quietly, her voice somehow distant, be the bridge, be the light. When iron melts when flowers spring from fields of blood. Let the land be witness and return home. Manon didn't hear the words, 
didn't notice when even Glenys returned to the city looming at her back. For hours, Manon knelt at, on the battlefield, Abraxas at her side, as if she might stay with them, her 13, for a little while longer. And far away, across the snow-covered mountains on a barren plain before the ruins of a once great city, a flower began to bloom. Oh, I'm so broken. <laughs> so that was the big emotional kind of moment for me. That one moment is probably one of the main reasons why I would absolutely love to make a screen adaptation for this series. Also, pages 800 to 801, did anyone else notice the massive Akatar shout out? And Feyre is clearly pregnant. And that's it, ladies and gents. That is the end of my journey with the Throne of Glass series. I'm sorry that this review is a bit messy. I might Myself, I'm just a bit of a mess right now so it was never really gonna have any structure to it and once I got to the part where the 13 died I was just gonna stop talking about it but I will say that the lovely little epilogue at the end with Rowan and Aelin waking up in their bedroom and Aelin going out to the balcony and seeing the king's flame flower blooming everywhere. That was so sweet and a really, really nice way to end the series. I don't think Sarah J Bass could have ended it any better. As always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so, so much for watching. In the comments below, do let me know what you thought of Kingdom of Ash, what your favorite moment was. Did you have any moments which you really didn't like about the final novel? And how did you feel once you finished it? Because I need to know if others who have read this series were as broken as I was when I finished Kingdom of Ash. So do let me know in the comments below. Stay safe everyone and I will catch you in my next one. Bye.